Hey you guys, today I'm going to talk about Black Ink Crew Chicago, Season 2, Episode 7. Still got a headache, just bear with me. Um, it started off with Ryan, well, I'm just going to talk about Ryan having this barbecue, whatever, at the shop. And, um, oh, I got something on my lip. But, um, hold on. Okay. So, Ryan has this barbecue, everybody's there, Dan, Kat, um, Charmaine, Danielle, Junior, everybody there except at this point, uh, Cobra. She's the only one out there at the, at, when it started. But they laugh and they have fun. They're talking about the violence that happened over Memorial Day, um, in Chicago, which I like. They always bring the light of the violence that's happening going on in Chicago. So I do like that. But, um, when cat number two came, because she was like, it's crazy how, you know, we, everybody gets along. I mean, you know how everybody fight or whatever, but we just fight against other people. Hold on. My bad. I had to close my door. The kids don't go to school today for election day. Stupid in Nevada. Don't blame me. Um, but yeah, cat ended up, cat number two ended up coming to the barbecue. After they was talking about how they all just don't get along with each other. Um, so everybody kind of gives her the cold shoulder. Nobody really wants to talk to her. Everybody giving her the cold shoulder. So she's trying to have a conversation with uh, Kat, one, and I think it was Danielle. She was trying to have a conversation with them. And probably Charmaine, too. But they have a problem with her saying... How she gonna come up here acting, acting like everything is cool when she went at Van? And I'm like, bitch, did I miss something? So apparently he went back and told them about a conversation he had with Cobra, but he didn't tell them the real. You know what I'm saying? And since she already come off aggressive, they probably already just went straight on Van's side. And I thought that was totally fucked up. So she then brought it up. She brought it up about um, Van coming at her and stuff like that. He was like, "Cause I said I said hi." And she, when she brought it up that he came at her, everybody was looking like, "Hmm, hmm." And I was like, "I want them to elaborate on that more because he disrespected the fuck out of her and didn't have no reason to." So anyway, then she ended up having like a little side conversation with um. Cat, she pulled Cat to the side, and she wanted to talk to Cat about the way Cat had came at her, talking about her tattoos or whatever. I'm, I'm sorry, I was on Cat's side at that point as far as constructive criticism. You have to be able to take it, whether you don't like what she said or you do. I did not think that Kat was coming at her on no malicious shit when she was looking at her tattoos. I really think she was giving her constructive criticism. Yes, she probably had a feeling, um, felt some kind of way about her because of what Van had said. But I don't think that she was coming at her malicious as far as her tattoos. Because even me and Mike B also looked at that tattoo that she did and was like, this shit is really, really dark. You know what I'm saying? So, um... That conversation went bad. First of all, let me tell you, Kat, I like you. But you can't be... Now, I know that you was popping off and she told you to shut up. And when she told you to shut up, was kind of fucked up and wrong. Um, But you calling her a bitch and calling her a motherfucker and blaming that on where you from? Bitch, everybody ain't where you from. So some places... Some people will pop the fuck out of you. Like me. Bitch, you come up in my face doing all that woofing. I'm going to pop you. You're not going to call me a bitch and a motherfucker and be all in my personal space and don't think you're going to get popped. And I believe Ryan broke that up because I think Cobra would have fucked Cat up, period. Period, point blank. I think she would have just boobopped this bitch like King Cobra on Mario Brothers and fucked her up. Um... Oh, anyway, and when Cat was arguing with Cobra, and she kept on saying, this is my shop, I'm like, bitch, where? I was with Charmaine, bitch, you don't work here. Like, but my whole thing was with that was, Ryan, you're a bad businessman. 
You a fucked up owner. There is no way they should have all been able to come at her like that into her business. And then you blame her and tell her to calm down. And I never once seen Ryan go reprimand them. I never seen him reprimand them for um, the way they came at her. The way Kat came at her and don't work there. Um, I thought Ryan was really bitch made for that, for not even stepping up for her, you know, her or whatever, and saying, hey, this is not what we're about to do, this is not what we're going to do, but Ryan, all of a sudden, they Ryan friends now, so Ryan is on their side, and Ryan, like, ugh, he, that, he irritates me as a businessman, for real, um, Charmaine goes to that radio station, to get a job. She wants to get a, radio, a job at this radio station. I have heard of the guy that she went to interview with. But I don't like him. I didn't like him. I thought he set her up to fail. Um, but at the same time, I thought she should have been well prepared if that's what she's been saying she want to do as a kid. You should have been a lot more prepared um, going into that interview and being serious about you want a job. But I do. I think he set her up for fail. I think the way he was talking to her, it was like he had ill will feelings for her and he was going to clown her on every chance he got. Um, I do think when she did the, uh, went online with the guys, I think the guys should have brought her in. I thought the conversation would have flowed better and she would have been able to find her groove into the conversation with the guys. I really thought they should have brought her in or whatever. Um, but like I said, I think he set her up to fail. Ryan on his date with um, Charmaine's friend. I can't remember her name. But he went on a date with Charmaine's friend in the park. I don't know where the hell she thought she was going. Did she not get the memo that they were going to be at the park? Um, because he was like, well, the way he was, he came at her was like, well, you knew we was coming to the park and you got on club clothes. And so I kind of looked at her like, bitch. But at the same time. I'm sorry, I would have been a fucked up day. We ain't walking down no hill in no grass with no heels on, boo-boo. We, mm-mm, nope, can I get on your back? Well, there, then her dress would have split. No, we wouldn't be doing this date. We would sit on his bench, have a nice conversation. Hey. Then he talking about how he really wanted, um, how he know how to treat a girl in a relationship now. And I'm sitting there like, boy, you look like you trying to fuck every chance you get on this date. Like, it seemed like he was really pushing up on her, kissing on her, doing all this. And I'm like, you don't even know her. But okay. Um, what else? Zan and Charmaine, they at the, uh... Nine mag, he getting drunk. I'm like, why are you getting drunk? Even as he say, today is my day off. Why are you there getting drunk? Why are you not at home getting drunk? Like, okay, y'all just getting drunk at the fucking shop, and then y'all have a problem with somebody that is professional. Like, this is stupid to me. And I liked this show last season. Oh my god. Anyway, um. G Herbal can come in. He's a known little rapper. Um, I've heard his music pull up. He got a lot of different music. I, I got his music in my playlist. But um yeah, I like that rolling song. Y'all know me. I y'all looked at my Juju on the beat uh video with me and my son. I love that kind of music. It gets me to party and it gets you that's like exercise music to me. So hey, shout out to G Herbal. Um, but he ended up getting a 150, uh, Dream Team tattoo on his arm, and Ryan did it. It was okay. It wasn't nothing spectacular, because it was already his logo. Um, the NIMAC crew is chilling at NIMAC. Everybody chilling. Don comes in. He calls the guys upstairs, and he want to talk to the guys. So the girl's looking like, what the fuck? This is weird. So he go up and tell the guys that he was dri caught driving on a spender license, so the judge is giving him 30 days in jail. They act like this boy was getting 30 fucking years. I don't know what he... Boy! <laughs> the bitch and the punk comes out of motherfuckers when they gotta go to jail. I promise. Will be me too. Because I ain't jail material. I promise I'm not. But at the same time, these motherfuckers be acting so hard, acting like they so about it, they this and that. But they get 30 days in jail. And I don't know how Chicago works, but I know, like, if you get 30 days here in Vegas or California, you're not doing the whole 30 days. You know what I'm saying? Especially on a fucking 
traffic light warrant like thing. You're not getting 30 days. You might do maybe a week, you know what I'm saying, or two. But you're not doing a whole 30 days. They act like this boy whole world was going to come down. The motherfucker ain't even got no job. So, what else you got to do? Don't tell me raise his kids because you can't provide for him financially because you ain't got no fucking job. Like, you still going to get paid because you signed the contract with, um... VH1. So I'm just saying, if he was getting four months like Van did, and I'd be like, oh, that's fucked up. But nigga, you getting 30 days and you're not going to do the whole 30 days. I'm just saying. Anyway, so then he goes down to tell the girls that he got to go to jail. And I'm with Charmaine, like, man, here we go. Oh, he trying to make his life better. He's trying to do the right thing. Thing, but he always lies and he try to just sweep his lies under the rug and expect everybody else that he had lied to or they was affected by his lies. He expect them to sweep him up under the rug too. It doesn't work like that. So at this moment, again, I was on Charmaine's side when it came to her and Don Beefing. Now, yeah, you kind of made it about yourself when he's telling y'all that he's going to jail. But at the same time, nigga, I'm not going to front in your face like I'm sad about you going to jail when you ain't even rectified all of the shit that you and put me through. So, hey, and then that whole fucking Thor, sit your motherfucking ass down. I hate for dudes to be sitting here jumping in arguments that don't have nothing to do with them, especially with female. I understand that's his brother, but fuck that. His brother had that conversation, but he trying to jump in. Why are you bringing up old shit? Maybe because that old shit wasn't resolved and y'all keep sweeping it under the rug like it was nothing. This boy lied to her. He lied to his girl. He had them fighting. He never apologized to say, hey, I did lie to you. That was really wrong of me. I put you in a fucked up um, situation. You got jumped. He never apologized for none of that. And so that's why she feels some kind of way. So that's why she don't feel like he he growed up or he um trying to make his life better. First of all, you can't be making your life better, but we ain't seen you turn up, get drunk, and get angry all over again. So yeah, I was I was like I said I was on her side. Fuck him and his apology. Well, no, he he ended up apologizing once his brother takes him outside and talks to him. And now he wants to go back and he apologized to Charmaine. And that's all she wanted. That's all she ever wanted to even make it move past it. Him acknowledge all the bullshit that he has put her through. And that's the same thing the other baby mama was trying to let him know. Like, own up to the shit that you've done. You lied to me. You lied to Ashley. And I wanted to just put it out there so we can move on. This creeping shit under the rug ain't fucking cool. I forgot to mention that he did go on a little play date with both of the kids and Ashley. And I thought that was cool. I'm glad she put her, you know, grown woman panties on and they know that it's not about her. It's not about Don. It's not about the uh, other girl. And so, um... They have this little play day, so he said that he wants to go to court, do what he had to do, and whatever. Okay. Um, so that was that with them. Why is this lip gloss irritating the fuck out of me? So, anyway, moving on from that, I'm, did, so I'm glad he did acknowledge that he played everybody, which actually was there to hear this shit. But for in the studio, he makes a song with Twister. Um, Twister is the known rapper. If y'all don't know who Twister is, I don't know where the fuck you been. But he's a very known rapper, bomb ass rapper. But they did a positive song about Chicago and the gun violence, and they just want to make a, you know, just put a positive spin on all of the stuff that's been going on with the 70 killings and stuff like that in Counting, because y'all know it was more, it, every time it's a holiday in Chicago, It'd be over 50 fucking deaths, and or shootings at least. And it'd be the same way, like in a lot of inner cities. It just don't be glorified like it does in Chicago because Compton has them, Long Beach have them. Here in Vegas, we have shootings. But it just don't be glorified because that's what Chicago is known for, is they violence and stuff like that. Um, Charmaine versus cat number two. Cobra. I'm going to call it Cobra. But um, they arguing because Cat Charmaine says that Cobra 
of all people all of a sudden stole her glasses after the barbecue her glasses went missing and then all of a sudden cobra posted a picture in the glasses i don't think that girl stole them glasses at all i think that they were doing anything to try to get this girl out the shop and once again Ryan acted like a straight bitch because he came in his shop and saw them arguing and did nothing. He sat there and let them argue like a motherfucker until a uh, homegirl told her ass don't get her ass beat. And then she's like, you ain't gonna do nothing. You ain't gonna beat mine and get my ass beat, girl boo. Then it tripped me out because Charmaine gonna say, um, she need to respect me on nine mag level. I'm like, isn't she employed but by nine max so but you're the manager you're not an artist you're not a tattoo artist and that's the same thing that cobra tried to tell that bird ass danielle at the beginning that um bitch until you start tattooing be quiet stay over there you're the receptionist you're the manager i didn't see anything that she that she said wrong even when they were arguing at the barbecue uh, and um at the end I didn't see what she, what was wrong about what she said because if a health department walked in there and saw the things that Cobra saw, you guys would be mad that y'all got fines or shut down. So, yes, she came off aggressive. She came off abrasive. I think she should have went to Ryan with a lot of things. But at the same time, everything that she said was correct. You motherfuckers will be straight shut down. Like, and if she's concerned about her client's well-being of having hepatitis C, Brian, you should take note of that and say, you know what, Cobra, you know, you're right. We do need to tidy up a little bit. You know, I understand it's a family business or friend business or whatever. But it's funny how it's a friend's business. And it's, they all nine mag when they teaming up on somebody. But, Ryan, you just was about, oh, nine mag, you about your business, you about this and that when you was hiring them. And nobody else had nothing to say. Now you get a, a girl that's in there that's professional and about her business, and y'all don't like it. That's that's why you would never grow if you still have birds in your shop thinking the way they think. You're going to always get the same clients, and this season making all y'all look bad. It makes Van look bad. It makes Ryan look bad. Four has always been a bitch to me. Don's always been a bitch to me. So, um, Kat, humble your fucking self. Now I'm starting to see what everybody else has been talking about when it came to Kat. Because I'm sitting there like, Kat, you don't work there no more. So you have no right to say any fucking thing. You sit back and you chill. And be like, hey. And if I was Kat, I would have sat back and chilled anyway. Because I would have been like, hmm. Now she's, everybody's seeing what I went through. But no. You want to be professional and, and build your brand, and none of them wanted you to do that. Same thing that's going on with her. She wanted to be clean, and none of them wanted to do that. So, it was stupid. Um, then when Charmaine tried to go out there and try to go off on um, Kat's boyfriend about the whole situation, and I was cracking up when he broke the glasses and was like, both of y'all got a pair now. Here you go. And she got mad. She left. Then Ryan wants to fire Cobra. Okay, but at the same time, she's not just the fucking problem. Why? Because everybody don't get along with her. And I felt her at the beginning like, why did y'all give Junior a chance and not me? They didn't give her a chance before she even started complaining about how dirty the shop was. They didn't give her a chance. When she walked in and Ryan said that he hired her, Van popped off. So, they never gave her a chance. Well, Charmaine gave her a chance, but bitch, you were rather than when you just twerk on people as everybody say it's not just one person that says bitch you don't do nothing you just twerk so i'm just saying um but yeah she was even asking ryan like how are you firing me when everybody is against me you ain't even sticking up to me you ain't saying nothing but he don't see that because he he don't know about business he ain't took business one-on-one -on -one. i guess he went straight from being a janitor to an owner so he didn't take the classes or study up on how to be a fucking business owner He's bad for business, I'm telling y'all. Um, that's all I got for Black Ink Crew. I'm about to go watch Married to Medicine right now, but and I'll be back. But um, yeah, I I was through. I was irritated. Y'all tell me what y'all thought about it.
Follow me on all social media. Bye together with you. T-H-A, not T-H-E. And I'll talk to y'all later. Peace.